Hello, it's system review time and today I'm going to be looking at this, the Sony Xperia E mobile smartphone budget jobby. Mm. How did I come to have this first of all? Well, for the past several years I've been using this, an Apple iPhone 3GS, which I love. I think it's great. It's a very well made, reliable, effective phone that did everything I wanted for the most part. Um, until apps started requiring updates that required updated firmware and I found I didn't have enough storage space to update the firmware so I couldn't update the apps so I couldn't use them. It was all getting a bit limited and frustrating so I thought time for a new phone. This, the Xperia E. £70 at Tesco um, bought with Tesco vouchers so basically it didn't cost me anything, <laughs> you know. Uh, I thought that seemed like a good deal. Um, specifications, it has a... the processor is a Snapdragon something or other, single core, one gigahertz. Uh, I thought, yeah, that'll be fine because the iPhone is like half that speed. Hmm. Um, 512 megabytes of RAM, I thought that'll be fine because the iPhone has half of that. Mm. Uh, 3 megapixel camera, uh, there's no camera on this side, uh, That there's some kind of sensor thing, I don't know what it does, there's a little tiny light there that lights up and tells you things. Uh, um, volume control rocker up and down there on off button there. I mean these are kind of odd places to have the things but it works. Uh, a button there for activating your camera. It'll activate it and trigger it um, which is quite good because you can use it like a tra traditional camera like that. Really good. like that feature. Um, micro USB input for data transfer and charging. Uh, headphone socket I uh, can't remember the dimensions of the screen, but it's much the same as the iPhone 3GS. Here's an interesting thing, which I'm not used to on um, phones, but I am used to Android. The, the things that you would normally get on the screen aren't. They're below the screen, but they work in the same way. So you've got your back button, your home button, back button, home button, and this is like a pull-down menu thing speaker is on the back. So uh, let's have a look at it. Let's, let me turn it on and point the camera at it and I'll talk about it like that. Oh, edit. Before I, yeah, before I show you what it's like running, let's see what comes in the box. The box is quite nice. You get a pair of headphones. These are all right. I prefer the headphones with the iPhone where with the iPhone you had uh, volume up and down control, you don't have that here, but you do have this button here which will uh, skip to the next track if you're listening to music, and I thought that was good. Um, it also acts as a pause as well. Push it once for pause and twice to skip the track. And I assume when you hit the pause you, you can answer your phone using this. The, the wire itself is not as nice as the iPhone wire, it's not as flexible, it's a bit stiff. Uh, it's not a deal breaker. It doesn't fit into the socket as nicely. You have to give it a really good push and it feels like you might actually break it when you do that. But uh, it, it hasn't broken in the week and a half that I've had it. You get your charger which is a USB thing and you get a USB cable with it so you can either choose to charge your phone with this or you can plug it into your computer for data transfer and charge it off your computer as well if you want. Um, you also get screen guard and tiny, tiny little cloth. And um, I don't know what you'd do with that. Something. You also get a um, SIM adapter. Is that still in here? Possibly. Yeah, you get a SIM adapter, so if you've got the wrong size SIM, if you've got a micro SIM, you can uh, chuck it in this and then stick this into the phone. Handy, I guess. 
Right, now I'll turn the camera around and we can have a look at the phone in operation. Okay, after a bit of editing, because uh, I had this set, so you could see my phone number and that's not good. Here it is in operation. The screen is not especially high res, it's actually the same resolution as the iPhone 3GS, so while some people complain about it, I actually find it perfectly acceptable. Though the brightness, it, in bright sunlight, it is not great. In fact, if you don't have the brightness up full, if you're outdoors, you just won't see diddly. That part is kind of unimpressive. You get, these apps are not how they would be out of the box. I've added some, I've arranged them and organized them, so you'll, you'll learn nothing from that. Set of icons down the bottom, your Chrome browser, Google Play Store thing, this uh, that takes you to all of your apps, um, messaging and phone. They are there as standard, as are a load of other things which I've since altered. Google Now thing, tap that, talk to it, it does cool things. OK Google, that kind of activates it <laughs> and what's it going to do? You can talk to it and all kinds of stuff. Tell Google what to do. OK, Google. Get stuffed. Here is get stuffed. <laughs> yeah, OK. I find that amusing. Is there is is Google's take on Siri, really. Um, all kinds of stuff built it there are apps and um, widgets and things built in as standard uh, I thought I got rid of that one actually news headlines and stuff whatever um, the standard stuff is pretty decent all of these contacts phone messaging browser settings blah 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 all of these are standard Facebook Google Maps lots of stuff that as standard are fine the Walkman Cool. FM radio. The FM radio is great because it works. Uh, you have to have a pair of headphones plugged in, but once they are, it works. I was able to get radio, BBC Radio 2, and it was fine. Track ID is great. It's like Soundhound or Shazam or whatever. Um, you click that when there's music playing, and it will tell you what the music is. And that's integrated with the FM radio as well, which is really cool. So if you're listening to something on the radio and you wonder what it is, it will tell you. These things are great. So, um, in operation, how is it? Out of the box, as standard, with all of the apps that it gives you, it is fine. Um, and then there is where you have a problem. If you want to do more than it gives you out of the box, you will run into problems. Um, and in fact you might actually run into problems just with what it gives you out of the box and I will go into some detail now. Storage capacity. This thing is described as having four gigabytes of storage. Mm. They don't really mention or explain that of that four gigabytes at least two gigabytes and maybe 2.3 perhaps is used for the operating system and the apps that are included with it. So when you take it out of the box you actually only have between 2 and maybe 1.7 gigs to install everything. Um, you can put a micro SD card in it and I have actually stuck a 32 gig SD micro SD card in it and I've put all my complete MP3 collection, that's like all of my CDs ripped and put on here which is fantastic. But we'll get onto that later. But apps, you cannot install your apps onto the micro SD card. They have to go onto the phone's internal storage. And when you've only got 1.7 gig to play with, I actually didn't find it a problem. But I don't play games on this. I have no intention of playing games. For anyone who wants to play games, don't. <laughs> Just don't bother. Because you won't be able to fit them all on. I... I had done all of my testing and playing around with apps on my iPhone. I knew what would get used and what wouldn't. 
and like there were lots of apps that I thought oh that's really good and clever and a brilliant idea maybe I'll use that one day but I never used them so when it came to installing stuff on here I only put on the things I knew I would use and it was fine I was able to fit them all on and with all of my music and photos and quite a lot of videos on the micro SD card I thought fantastic yeah and this is where we get the problem out of the box without adding anything to it it runs quite smoothly but the way Android works it holds apps in memory in RAM it keeps them there cached so that the ones it thinks it will use more it doesn't have to load them off of the SD card or out of storage they're already there in RAM but RAM on this is so limited 512 meg that performance suffers um, and some apps are better at freeing up memory than others and I've had to remove some. The BBC iPlayer radio app, I, as soon as I installed that the whole thing just slowed to a crawl, it was laggy you couldn't just do that, it would sit and go duh and until I uninstalled it, it made the phone useless uh, there was another one, another Siri-like type assistant thing. After I installed that, it was rubbish. Facebook, God, no. I mean, I don't like Facebook anyway, but I, I installed the update for Facebook. All of a sudden, the phone was lag central. Awful. But even when you found out which apps create lag, when you've got anything more than the basic stuff installed it all starts hogging memory and certain real basic functions that you expect to work perfectly don't um, the Walkman it's like the 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 killer app if you like it's what it's all about it's Sony the Walkman app mp3 playback stutters you can be playing a piece of music and you'll maybe get one or two tunes will play just fine and then all of a sudden you'll start getting breaks in the tune if the phone does anything other than play the music if it accesses your Wi-Fi if it accesses mobile data if it just pours, if it's got to do any kind of multitasking whatsoever any kind of operating system function that is doing behind the scenes your music will stutter and that's just not good enough I understand why it does it, it's single core, but then the Apple iPhone 3GS, that was single core, surely, with half the power and half the memory, and it didn't stutter just because it was looking for a Wi-Fi network. Um, other stuff, critical, critical, this is what's killed it for me, the phone, the, it's a phone, its main function becomes unreliable. I have had it, I've had the phone ring and I've swiped to answer the phone and it has failed to respond. It's locked up, it's just sat there and gone duh and I missed the call because I couldn't answer the phone because it lagged so badly. If it's been idling for a while and its RAM is full of stuff that it thinks you might want to use later, it doesn't have enough RAM left to answer the bloody phone. So it's got to spend uh, an unacceptable amount of time clearing the RAM to then load the phone application so that you can answer the phone. And by the time it's done all of that, you've missed the call. It's also failed to clear. I've had the phone app running. I've had a junk call. I answered it, but then the screen blanked and I couldn't end the call. It was some stupid PIP compensation rubbish. And I was at the vet's at the time, it was a very, very um, inappropriate time to be having a call, and I couldn't make it stop because the phone just locked up and blanked. Um, unacceptable. So, many of the things on this seem very, very promising. But, unless you keep it as it is out of the box and just use the apps they give you, it is not fit for purpose. If you want to install anything that is going to take up any amount of memory on this, it, it's, it's, it's a piece of junk. It's going back. I've had it a week and a half. This is going back. And it, it is so rare 
that I buy a piece of gadgetry and you know even if I think well it's not as good as I thought it was I keep them I only send things back if they're broken or not as described well this is described as a phone but if you do the things with it that you're supposed to be able to do with a smartphone like install apps and play music and still use it as a phone this does not function as described your music stutters your phone locks up and becomes unresponsive absolutely not acceptable I don't care that it's dirt cheap it was £70 from Tesco bought with Tesco vouchers that's a bargain for a smartphone except it doesn't work as it should so uh, I don't care how cheap it is it's not worth it it's going back I will expect my Tesco club card points vouchers thing to be refunded um, and if it, they're not well I will be complaining very loudly at someone so there you are I am hoping to get a an Xperia M soon um, as part of my uh, phone contract thing with Vodafone which from what I can tell is very much the same thing as this but with a better camera more memory and a two core CPU I expect it to work this the, the primary problem with this is it's a single core CPU with not enough memory it can't keep up the moment it tries to multitask or do anything or juggle its memory around it trips over itself that is the problem they have tried to do too much with too little and failed and it there is so much that I like about it um, all the things that it has built in that if they worked properly would make it really good I would be really really happy with it if the phone worked without locking up if the music would play without stuttering I would be very happy with this as it is it is unable to do that and it's going back there you go thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video please consider clicking the thumbs up button I upload videos daily so go ahead and hit subscribe if you'd like to see more. To all those who've already subscribed, I'd just like to say a great big thank you.